What's up, people? Hope you're all doing great out there in the uh, internet landscape. Yeah, so today I'm here with a mixed rundown of a new track I made exclusively with the Joey Sturgis Tones Menace plugin. This is an amp sim that really excels for aggressive high gain guitar tones, but it's actually a lot more versatile than you might think with the name Menace. You can get some kind of bluesy or crunchy tones or lower gain sounds that I really like to use. And I made a whole song with this plugin and we're gonna go through the mix now. I'll show you all the tones I made, how I mix them, how they sit with the other parts. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's do it. Okay, so here we have the logic session for this song I've recorded with the Tone Forge Menace. Gotta use the full name, be proper here. So let's take a listen to how this sounds all together. Let me mute this mic. Sounds sick. Really nice, really nice high gain tones. Love the character, the distortion. Just a great sounding plugin. It's so impressive how good these software amps sound now. It's just, it's insane. But yeah, let's talk about the mix. So for the rhythm guitars, I've got two tracks left and right. On the left track, I'll pull up that uh, tone here. The left track, I recorded that with my Ibanez RG752 AHM. Let's take a look at that tone now. So this is the UI for the Menace plugin got the like amp head here on this page. Pretty straightforward controls, gain, three band EQ, presence, and like an output level just to adjust your volume uh, after all the other tone shaping options. In front of that, you've got like a Tube Screamer style overdrive here. This is a really nice inclusion I think that they put in this, in this plugin. Gives you some extra like gain staging and like gain sculpting capabilities to play with the gain from the uh, overdrive versus the gain from the amp. Really cool inclusion there. After those two, you've got the cabinet section. For this tone, I went with the like 57 model. <clears throat> Impulse response, excuse me. Yeah, fit, uh, like an SM57 mic. You've got four different tones here. I love that they included the 57 off axis. That's a really useful sound, especially for a plugin. You can't really get that from most plugins, but it's a very, very nice tone for rhythm guitars, especially if you've got other lead stuff going on or synths or whatever really nice feature they added there also got a condenser kind of like this one i'm using right here actually it almost it kind of looks like the the same one <laughs> maybe it is i don't know and then another uh, i think this is a dynamic mic i'm not really sure i'm not a mic expert and next we've got a five band eq here um each band can really go to any frequency but they've kind of got them laid out like low mid 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 high across the spectrum kind of like you would geometrically uh intuit and then what I think is the most interesting about this plugin is the last stage here is a limiter. That's a very, very cool feature for a guitar plugin like this for just like crushing maybe eight string tones or something like that. I don't really use that kind of tone too often, but I don't know, maybe I will. And if I, if I ever do, got this guy ready to go. So yeah, that's the tone for the left side. Let's take a look at the same uh, settings for the right side, which uh, on the right I recorded this track with my other Ibanez guitar. It's a 73 or RG7321. I've had that thing for a long time now. Cheap guitar, but cheap guitars play good if you set them up the right way. <laughs> so yeah, let's take a look at these settings, starting with the overdrive. This is what we got here. Roll the, get, uh, the tone down a little bit because the pickup I use there is a little brighter. Uh, a little gain reduction there. Uh, let's see. What we got here, leaving the mids just straight up, knocking a little bass back. Actually, I used a little bit more gain than I typically would on this one. I'm a, I'm a low gain kind of guy, I don't know. I like my, my picking dynamics to really, really come through. EQ here, just got a, a slight cut at 2106 to be exact, for we're getting precise here, <laughs> 2106 hertz, and I did not use the limiter either. So yeah, those are the tones there. Uh, let's, let's see what other tones we got next. So yeah, this next section has oh, some lead playing. Let's just play from that uh, from that section we already heard into that.
very nice there. As you can see, I've done a bunch of other processing after for the lead, uh, the lead part for some time-based effects and reverb and stuff. Let's take a look at the bass tone here, or not bass, B-A-S-E tone, not, not bass guitar. Um, <laughs> that can be confusing here in this context. So yeah, on this lead patch, I've got the bass boosted just a little bit to give it some body for those, because uh, I'm playing pretty high up on the neck, boosting the treble pretty aggressively there just to give it some nice, uh, make it stick out in the mix, you know, but keeping the presence a little dialed back. The treble, it kind of just boosts the like high mids really, and I, I like the way that sounded here. Bumping the gain just a bit, see what we got with the overdrive. Taking the drive down a little bit. This is kind of similar to the right hand tone I was using, or the right rhythm guitar tone I was using earlier. Uh, which mic we got here. The 421, yeah, that one sounded really nice and warm on this uh, solo. In this part of the song, it's kind of like a like an ambient, like spacey sort of sort of solo, or that's what the other, the rhythm guitar is doing there. So I wanted a warmer kind of mellow tone, and that worked perfectly with the 421 microphone. EQ here, uh, taking some cuts at probably 100, I guess this is five. Yeah, I always cut 500. This always sounds so garbage in most situations or guitars that I have. And then another cut at 1K to kind of sep uh, separate it a little bit from the upper mids. And that's it for the tone there. Let's check out some of these other effects. Good God, there's so many. Okay, here we go. Uh, using another EQ there to just make some other light cuts. I like to do my EQing and cutting in like stages so that I'm not working one band of an EQ too hard because I find that it just works better if you kind of uh, stack them. In certain contexts, in this one it works, some others it might not. I don't know, there's no rules here. But yeah, that's what I did on this tone. Uh, stereo delay, I really like the like ping-ponging of it, kind of cool. Uh, I got a quarter note on the left, eighth note delay on the right, just kind of really barely blending it into the mix to just give that solo a little bit more body. And because uh, there's a lot of long held notes in there, it's not a really, not really a burning solo, it's kind of kind of chilled as you can see here. Chill solo, chill solo bip. Is it chill? I don't know, that's up to you guys. Next, one of my favorite plugins in the world. This is the uh, Logic Pro X Chroma Verb. And I went with this vocal hall setting. I like to do that for guitar solos because in my instru uh, instrumental music, I obviously don't have vocals. So if I can add some like vocal quality to them with effects or whatever, I mean, this is just a reverb plugin, but if you, using this vocal style reverb, I thought it uh, set the reverb of this solo pretty nicely in the mix. Um, one, not a very long decay, not even much of it in the mix, just a little bit, taking a little bit of the dry off too to give it kind of a ethereal quality. And finally, I've got like a Logic Pro X has these console EQ emulations that are really nice. And I use it to just take a little bit back of the low mids and bump a little bit off the high gain to give it that mellow quality I was talking about earlier. And then I like this control here. It kind of, it's like a, a saturation knob almost for this like kind of vintage style EQ. And I like to use it on uh, electric guitars, specifically with guitars I record with plugins to give it a little bit more warmth, but not too much. Cause if you, if you crank this guy like really crazy, then it can get a lot of weird like high frequency harmonics that don't sound so great with distorted guitars. Sounds cool with cleans though. All right, yeah, let's go through the next section of this song. Yeah, let's talk about that little pre-chorus section there real quick. So the rhythm guitar tones are still the still the same rhythm guitar tones. Those are like they're just static throughout the uh, throughout the mix. There's a couple automation things I did with them that we can get into. But I want to talk about these synths. Oh, let me. I gotta hide all my hide all my actual tracks and then bounce them because <laughs> like I like I was saying, my computer is struggling. So yeah, this one I affectionately called Sonic the Synth Hog because. Uh, I like Sonic the Hedgehog, and the tone reminded me of the old, like the classic video game sounds, you know? So let's just solo this guy and see what it sounds like. Cool. 
So I use that synth here to double the uh, the riff that's going in, the melody that's playing in the guitars. I really like the way that, like, just a kind of a subtle synth like that can play with the harmonics of the guitars and kind of just give them an extra, a different character. So let's take a look at the synth itself. This is um, Alchemy. This is a plugin that comes with Logic Pro X and it's kind of amazing that I would I would pay the amount that Logic Pro X costs just for this synthesizer. But it comes with Logic, it's dope. If you never used it, check it out. So yeah, this is the tone here. I went with, it was like a some sort of like keys preset and then I made some adjustments to it added uh, let's see check a look at the filters here this is a noise filter kind of gives it a little like plucky sort of sound where was the one that I added the saw wave yeah there we go so this had a, a kind of a different sound before I tweaked it a little bit added this uh, saw oscillator onto it to give it some like grit and distortion almost to fit in with the guitar distorted context let's see what I did here this was the one it's hard to remember exactly what you do with these things, you know? But yeah, this is the synth tone. Um, got a, this is like the other mixer section down here if you've never used Alchemy. I bumped the attack up just barely to take like the percussive quality off of it to let it sit a little bit further back in the mix to not really uh, ruin where the guitars are going to just give it kind of a, a spacious quality instead of having that like percussive attack. It still has a nice attack, but it's not as drastic and sharp, just that slight bump on the uh, the attack time and the ADSR filter. And one of the th cool things I think that makes this uh, synth tone sound really nice is this like pitch glide right here. Let's take a listen. It's a little hard to hear because it's so subtle, but there's a in in Alchemy or in a lot of synths, there's like a pitch glide control that you can set to make the synthesizer automatically like glide to the pitch as you change and you can set the amount of time that takes. So I set a very, very short glide time to make it even less like uh, similar to the, the effect that uh, raising that decay time has. Adding just a little bit of that pitch glide gives it a different character and almost like a legato sort of style to make it sit a little bit further back in the mix. And I just like the way they glide sounds. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool. So yeah, moving on. That's that synth tone. Let's just keep listening for a second. Cool. Yeah, next new element we've got there in that like chorus section is this piano. I called it Piano Dream because I'm unoriginal with names and I name everything Dream. Anyway, that's a separate issue. But yeah, this is called Piano Dream. It's uh, like I saw, like I pulled up when we were listening. It's this. Uh, this is from a plugin called Analog Lab or Analog Lab Three specifically from Arturia. Um, came with a MIDI controller that I have, and it's a really, really nice plugin. It's just a kind of a preset-based uh, synth bank, or there's also some acoustic instruments. I really like this particular piano patch that's here. What is this one? Yeah, American Large Hall. I just wanted to go with like a walking kind of melody line for that section, and I thought a kind of a verby piano would sound good with some extra processing. So that's the piano sample there, pretty straightforward piano. And let's see what else I did to it. Got an EQ here. I really just wanted to keep, well, they're all off right now because CPU power, man. Got it. You got to grab it when you can get it. <laughs> but yeah, so let's turn it back on so we can see the nice colors. Yeah, boosting these harmonics here and like uh, 
the two to like 8k range for almost like a vocal type quality and cut making some pretty big cuts here around 400 uh to to get out of the way of the rhythm guitars in that whole section other than that got a chorus plug in just logic pro straight up chorus just to give it a little bit of motion again to make it not clash with the rhythm guitars uh, another console eq instance there for the same reason just boosting the hell out of the highs here for those harmonics that i really wanted to come through making another big cut in the low or up eh, kind of just mid mids <laughs> not the high or low mids just your just your mid mids making another cut there to get out of the guitars way nice separation of them then we've got a stereo delay to add more space to that to give uh, make the each note in that like walking melody last a little bit longer have a little bit more impact and finally again my my trusty friend chroma verb can't get away from it it's so good yeah using the concert hall uh setting here you can in chroma verb you can pick through all these different uh like reverb characters and then make your own adjustments there here i've got it's like its own eq which is really useful just a broad low cut because i don't want the i don't really want the low frequencies reverberating i just want those vocal like harmonics to sit in the mix there so kind of leaving everything open in that range, cutting off any harsh highs. I like this control here on Chroma Verb. Really nice, like a stereo width control. Don't ask me how stereo width works. I just know what it sounds like. <laughs> so yeah, that's that piano line. Let's take a listen again. There's one more tone we should go through. Let's just listen from here until that happens. Sweet, love the way that lead tone sounds. So this is the um, tone that I've got for that last solo there. It's not the chill solo, it's the other solo. <laughs> the chill solo is first. This one's called Solo 2, very original name there. Yeah, so I just called this patch 752 solo because I recorded it with the 752. Um, cutting the mids just a little bit, give it a different sort of feel from the first solo tone. A little bit less treble because uh, the, the impulse response I used here had a little bit brighter character to start with. Check out our pedal settings, boosting the tone a little bit there. That's another use for this like front end drive. Super, super cool way to just add in some more capabilities. I love that they put that in. I don't think I've said it enough times. I love that they put that in. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm using the condenser. Uh, condenser IR for this one. I like the way the condenser res uh, impulse response in this plugin. It just sounds really nice. It has a very nice high end character, um, and that's why I've got the presence rolled back a good bit. Was just because I found that this this impulse response already had a very present character, so had to balance it kind of carefully. Let's look at our EQ. Uh, only one cut here. If I had to guess, it's at 500. 542, okay, I was close. <laughs> That's just usually where I make my uh, make my cut. All right, next, let's see, another another EQ instance. Like I said earlier, I like to stack those EQs, not make anybody work too hard, you know, just distribute it. Another another classic g pain EQ move here. Make a cut around five, make a cut around two. Real nice. Yeah, next we've got our good friend, the stereo delay. Just a little bit here of the mix. I don't want too much of the delay in 
in the solo, but I want it to kind of increase the the body and the presence, presence isn't the right word, the uh, sustain of each note, because I'm cutting away a good bit of the low frequencies. And I love that on this stereo delay in Logic, you can be selective about the frequencies you actually feed to the delay. So you can cut the highs so your, your main line is heard as more present and the delay repeats. You can also cut the lows, or you can, you can do whatever range you want. It'd be super cool if this was multi-band, but it is not. Anyway, still really cool. Next, you probably guessed, it's Chromaverb, again. It's just so good. And I went with the synth hall preset on, well not, not a preset, the synth hall mode on this track, let, let's call it. Um, I don't know, I just like the way it sounds. The synth hall, I think, compared to the vocal hall preset that I went, that I used on the first solo, has a bit of a warmer character to it, and I just kind of like the way it sounded paired with the condenser impulse response. And another, just a kind of a broadband cut under 500 for the reverb EQ, just a couple of dB. Don't want to get too crazy down there. And let's take a look at the last but not least, our good friend, the console EQ. Making another cut on those high harmonics and around si Oh, oh my goodness. What is this blasphemy? What have we done here? <laughs> okay, well that's where I'm making my cut and I'm using a little bit of this drive. So yeah, that's all the tones. No, I'm sorry, I lied. There's one more tone. Let's go back and listen to it from the first solo. This guy. Let's just listen to it by itself so you can hear what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's the uh, like ambient sort of guitar tone. You might not have known it was a guitar tone. It's not. It's not really obvious, I guess, when you hear it because it's very heavily processed. But that's the ambient sound under the first solo of the track. Let's take a look at it. Oh no, that's the that's the bounce in place. CPU power, man. One day I'll upgrade. Anyway, yeah, this is the uh, patch I went with for that. Um, ambient section. Cut a lot of the bass, a lot of the mids. I wanted really scooped because I just wanted it to sit kind of around the other guitar solo tone, if that makes if that makes any kind of sense. Um, here's the settings for that overdrive. Didn't really use too much of that. Boosted the tone a little bit. A very low gain because I wanted this to just kind of sit, like I said, around the other tone. And I'm using the 421 uh, impulse response here because I like, I like the mellow character of that one. Well, maybe mellow isn't the right word for a tone called menace but anyway yeah it's a little bit more uh i'd say subdued than the others let's use that word um here's our eq making some cuts at 200 oh no now i messed it up okay yeah 180 uh making some cuts at another 200 making some cuts at a thousand making a slight cut at 4k to get out of the way of the solo and then kind of a shelf or a low pass i'm sorry at 7k just a little bit to give it a filtered kind of quality and then we're doing a bunch of other stuff run it through another chorus instance another stereo delay i like to just use a little bit of the mix on the stereo delay very nice effect in logic letting more uh more of the highs through on this one for the delay just a little bit more than the other in the solo instance we looked at uh chroma verb again man i use this on like every freaking track it's so good uh, this one I wanted a like a dense reverb because the the tone like I'm cutting away a good bit a hey, cutting away a good bit of the the dry signal there and I just wanted kind of a dense reverb sound because most of it is just the reverb. Next we've got another uh, channel EQ making a big big cut around 600 more even more scooped sound. And then finally, a compressor to just kind of level out the volume of the delays and the reverb and kind of just glue it all together. And there's one other thing I did with this uh, this track here. I did some like panning effects. So let's take a look at those. Yeah, uh, where's that? This one? Yeah, you can see here, if you put uh, in Logic, if you use this touch mode and you like 
control you use the knob for like whatever thing you're trying to write the automation for it will just write it for you in real time so i just played back and kind of made a slow pan back and forth with the tempo of the song so you can hear that uh that reverby like rhythm guitar part pan back and forth so yeah those okay now officially those are all of the tones that were used in this song uh this video is pretty long already so i think i'll cut it now and if you'd like to hear the song, you can check it out on the Joey Sturgis Tones page. You can check it out on my YouTube channel. It's on uh, several different places, probably be on Bandcamp as well. On my Bandcamp page, Somatist uh, is my Bandcamp name and artist name. So yeah, really, really love the way that Tone Forge Menace sounds. I'm so impressed with the tones I was able to get from it. And writing this song with it was just a breeze. Like It's just a very inspiring plug-in for rock or metal players out there if you've never tried it i really encourage you to pick it up and give it a playthrough give it a give it a run on some of your songs maybe write something new with it i, I know that you can get great tones with it and it, i mean this was all in the box it's a really really nice plugin very very impressive well, all right friends thank you for uh, checking out this video i really appreciate it and i hope you learned a little bit about tone forge menace maybe learned a little bit about some other of my favorite logic plugins that i like to use like chroma verb and stereo delay and all that you use logic check them out all right let's call it peace friends